Hi folks, Dave here. So I'm out of my solar workshop and I'm doing some research and experiments. This is going to be your first look at one of my semiconductor space heaters. It's a prototype. There's two similar to this. That's one of them. I'll show you the other one in a minute. And I'm just doing some testing here. I got an amp meter that I just hooked up and that's running off solar panels that are outside. These wires go to the solar panels out of my shop. The shop is toasty warm. I have so much heat coming in right now. I do want to add more capacity. There's one of my solar electric space heaters running. And it's running in conjunction with the diode chain, which is acting as a semiconductor space heater as well as a power optimizer or a regulator. So it's regulating the max power voltage of my solar panels automatically and extracting the maximum amount of heat, or nearly so. Of course, they can't get that last 5% probably. Those are just rough numbers. However, for something that has no sophisticated electronics, no microprocessor, no inductors, no DC conversion, that's astonishing. The effectiveness of this kind of circuit is absolutely amazing to me. I can't get over it. It's also powering a fan. It's powering that fan there as well. So I don't need a DC converter to run forced air. So we have all that going on over here. On this side, we have some additional space heaters. There's my old standby. That one runs on 55 volts DC. And so does that one. That's just one I have available in case I need to test. It's just a uh, standard AC heater. I haven't modified it. And I also have another space heater, which is in testing right now. This is a more recent one that I built, so it's in testing. Also running an infrared bulb. Several subscribers had asked me about these bulbs, and I really was always interested in them. I just didn't have time and the opportunity. But uh, So I went out and bought me a couple, and uh, it is getting hot. This is running off of solar panels, by the way. It's very hot. It's too hot to put your finger on there. Get some nice heat. So yeah, this is uh, literally just plugged this in. I just wanted to uh, experiment with it. So I hope you guys who were uh, asking about these in the comments will uh, like this. It's just a real early test, plug and play test here to see what happens. This uh, bulb is being regulated by a diode chain. So these are tracking the voltage. And it's almost like MPPT. Of course, I'm also running heaters. So all these things are running on the same set of solar panels. I have multiple sets, but this is acting like a regulator and it is working very well. This is the first real test of this particular heater. I just got done building this. I had to do some modifications. Uh, these are very tedious to build. I still have to drill and tap all the uh, screws to hold all these down. That is an absolute chore, I'll tell you, but it has to be done. I've started using low-end heatsink paste compound. I got a good deal on this bag and I'm using that to attach the diodes to my heaters. But I also have some ideas about what to do with this paste, um, if I can find it in larger quantities for not too much money. But that's going to be something I do down the road. Okay, I had to add a fan because this heater was always designed to have a fan and I hadn't put that on there yet. So I just put this DC blower on there. And that blower is pushing air through the heat sink there. This is a Nippon Chemicon industrial heat sink. It is absolute beast. Uh, that is probably... I don't know how thick that would be. It's like 12 millimeters thick. And that's just blowing air through. Very warm air coming out the other side here. It's amazing the amount of warm air that's coming out. And I need to do some more uh, modifications. This is just a bare heater. It's going to be inside of a case. But it's okay to test it this way. I'm also tracking the temperature of the diodes. So that's why I've got a thermocouple set up. Just to keep an eye on them to make sure they don't get too hot. They do get very, very hot. Had to turn the fan up. It was not pushing enough air. These are getting pretty toasty. Like I said, there's a lot of heat coming out. These are doing a good amount of heat. And eventually there's going to be a better cooling setup. But this is the first true test, and I just want to see if they can handle the power. Not pushing a huge amount of power through here. Most of the heat is coming from my nichrome my heaters. That's the whole point. So I'm going to push hard on those, and the diodes will handle the remaining power which is what I intended. Of course, I could put kilowatts of heat through these diodes, but that would require a bigger setup, and I'm not terribly interested in doing that. And it looks like the temperature is starting to come down because I turned the fan up, so that's good. That's uh, Fahrenheit, by the way. Celsius, 56C. I prefer Fahrenheit. Sometimes I do use Celsius. These diodes, you know, they can get up to 60 Celsius, no problem, but obviously I'd like to run them cooler if I can. 
the whole point of this is not to make hot diodes, it's to get the heat up. So I'd like to get them down to around 50 Celsius if I can, and it's just going to take time. And you can keep using your nichrome PVDC space heaters at the same time, and since these don't regulate and can't track the maximum power point voltage, the diodes will do that for you. That's what's so amazing about them. Here's a close look at my amp meter. Now this is not the amount of heat I'm getting. This is the amount that the diodes are trimming off the top, so to speak. So it's pulling about 79 watts of heat out. And most of that would not be available if it wasn't for the diodes. So the nichrome heater would not be able to extract this extra heat. What the diodes are doing is acting like a power optimizer. They're tracking the correct voltage, which is in the 60 volt range. Really, I'd be happy with 59 to 63 volts or something like that. And the diodes are doing this automatically. I don't have to worry about anything, I guess, other than making sure they don't overheat. And this here is just to watch the diodes work. So that's what they're pulling. Here's another clip of the outlet air on the diode chain semiconductor space heater. It's currently about 95 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a uh, 35C. And that's the temperature of the one of the diodes. And there's a quick hint about a few other projects I have going on. That's a bag of sand, for those who don't know what that is. So I'm working on several sand battery ideas and other thermal storage concepts. That project is moving along. There's several projects like that. I'll try to post as soon as I have something that's worthy of posting and show you where I'm getting on that project. And I really hate spoiling the surprises, but over there in that bucket is the world's first, as far as I know, semiconductor solar electric hot water heating element. The reason I'm not zooming in on it is not because I want to tease anybody, but because I don't want to spoil the upcoming video. But that's it, sitting in that container there to protect it. I have not installed it yet. I'm going to install it and test it. I don't think there's a such thing as a semiconductor heating element for hot water heaters. Maybe it does exist, but I haven't seen it. So if it doesn't already exist, like I said, that's the world's first. And I've had this idea for a long, long time. In fact, I did get several suggestions down the road about why don't you make a hot water heating element. That's an immersion heating element. Believe me, I wanted to, and I was working on it. It was just really slow. That's actually the second, though. Really, that's not the first one. So really, I've made other versions I just didn't want to show on camera. This is the first one I'm going to show on camera. And yeah, I've been uh, getting a lot of stuff from the dollar store to keep the cost down. And this allows me to do a lot of projects and experiments. These uh, containers here are fantastic. They're $1.25 each. And I just keep getting stuff from the dollar store. So if you're a DIYer and you want to do projects, really check out the dollar store. They have some of the best stuff I've ever seen for the cheapest amount of money I've ever seen. Um, actually, I have a whole pile of stuff. That's not all of it. And there will be some dollar store related projects coming up. So look for those videos as soon as possible. Well, I hope you enjoyed this quick look at what I'm doing in the solar workshop today. I'm just running my heaters, catching up with some work I have to do. And I'll be doing some more videos as soon as I can. It just takes an incredible amount of time and effort. There is going to be some video about these diode chain heaters as soon as possible. These would be considered semiconductor space heaters that run off of solar power. And of course, they don't look like space heaters. They look like some kind of strange technology, but very simple, very basic, very robust, and it works very well. Think of these like MPPT for solar electric heat, except it doesn't require any MPPT electronics. It doesn't do any voltage conversion or anything like that. I hope you enjoyed this quick update about my workshop. If you guys have any questions or any concerns, please let me know. And uh, also I noticed we're up over 15,000 subscribers. I want to thank you guys very much for your support and for subscribing. It means the world to me. So thank you very much. And thank you for watching. All related video and playlist links are posted in the description down below. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.